What's up everybody, Steven the Lightspeed here, and today we're gonna to be taking a look at Prusa Slicer 2.3.0. Um, I am currently using the uh, Release Candidate 2, um, and I believe there is an update, I just haven't updated yet. But the point of today's video is, is uh, I don't know what it is, lately I've heard a couple questions, a lot of people are moving to Prusa Slicer, but one of the questions that keeps coming up is, is uh, Prusa Slicer, and somehow they have, you know, they're asking why are my why are my pro, my prints not sticking? It was fine in S3D, it was fine in Cura, um, and there's a a myriad of answers that we could go or situations that we could go into explaining why your prints aren't sticking. But one I came across tonight on Twitter, well, uh, somebody asked, you know, I, how about um, brims or rafts? Um, does Prusa Slicer have any um, adjustments for the brim or the wrap? And the, the answer to that question is no. For whatever reason, Prusa Slicer does not include any, or that I know of anyways, any adjustments to your, to your brim or a wrap. And if you're printing a part that is like this, this tall cylind you know, cylinder, basically that is standing on end on the bed, um, you are almost certainly going to need something to help stick this part down. In this printer, it'll probably be okay because the bed's stationary, but even then, the taller it gets, the nozzle will kind of touch it or uh, make a movement over it, or well, even while it's printing, you'll see it drag, you'll see it drag the part around, and the, the print quality will get less and less and less and less as you get to the top. There's some other things you can do, like uh, you know, a good amount of Z-hop. You know, I've used as much as you know, one and a half millimeters of Z-hop before, that, that certainly works. Um, but the, the kind of the go-tos are the brim or a raft. So let's take a look at the raft really quick and I'll show you what, um, what it does. I'm not a big fan of Prusa Slicer uh, rafts. For whatever reason, I've used other rafts and other slicers and it just, first of all, it doesn't have a lot of adjustability. Um, so you can't really tune it and pick something that works for you or the material, material or the print you're using. Um, this is basically it here, you got a raft setting. Um, and you can pick how many layers you want it. The other thing that affects the raft is the contact Z distance. So these settings do apply to the raft, but this one's probably the most notable one. And all it does is it's setting the air gap between the top of the raft and the bottom of your part. So in this case, 0.23. So when you take a look at this, you'll see what I mean. We'll slice this really quick. And you'll see that there's the, there's the little raft. Um, by the way, some slicers, you know, you can pick how big, how wide you want the raft, and I like that too. I think that that's uh, something that would be very nice to have in Prusa Slicer. But basically, nobody I know, or uh, you know, I don't know a lot of people that 3D print, but um, I don't think I've ever used the raft in Prusa Slicer successfully. Um, I'm just not a fan of it. So, but you can see underneath here, that dark blue is telling us that that is an overhang perimeter because that is basically going to go up. 0.23 and it's going to print in air and the hope is that the two plastics will you know sticking to each other will give you enough adhesion to go the rest of the way and it'll be better than your adhesion on the bed um, and that's probably true in most cases but again I haven't had very good luck with the the rafts and Prusa slicer um, I don't use them very often um, but that we're gonna to get to a trick at the end of this that will, I think will help a lot of people with this. So let's let's cross off wraps for now. When you got a part like this, um, you got very little adjustment and I don't think that the raft is gonna give you any better adhesion than it just sticking to the bed anyways. This printer is a, is a glass bed with um, Vision Miner nanopolymer adhesive and that stuff works fantastic. And I could probably print this part, no problem. I have regular print speeds um, with this stuck to the bed, but most printers are not gonna be able to do that. If you have a Cartesian printer, that bed is gonna be going back and forth and back and forth and um, no glue or praying or perfect bed settings is going to change the fact that the print bed is moving back and forth and the taller that print gets, it's going to move. It's just. It's almost inevitable unless you're going extremely slow. So let's, for the sake of this uh, conversation for Cartesian, Delta, and Core XY, we're gonna throw we're gonna throw Raft out the window with Prusa Slicer. So the next thing that Prusa Slicer offers us to help um, bed adhesion is it offers us a brim. 
And what a brim is, is it's basically a single layer that prints out from the part and it does leave a little bit of like, I think it's a line width around the part and then it prints outward like this. And all your only setting with brim is how wide do you want it? You can make it as wide as you want or as small as you want. And uh, I'm gonna show you right here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you also another big mistake with brims that end up happening. So we're gonna make this a 10 millimeter brim or actually we're gonna make it a 20 millimeter brim. Thin, tall part. We're gonna make this brim, you know, huge hopefully to help uh, make this part stick to the bed, right? So we're gonna slice this and you're gonna see an issue here. You're gonna see this, this gap right here. And what this is, uh, believe it or not, is this is the purge line. So when we go back to our settings here, you'll see that uh, the distance from object is usually, I think factory is set, or uh, the uh, stock settings on this is set at two millimeters. Um, I can't, I can't really recall, but I think it, I think Prusa Slicer puts it at two millimeters um, on their settings. Okay, so I usually keep mine at six um, to get it away from the parts. But if you do a brim that's bigger than your purge line, the purge line does not respect the brim, meaning that um, the the purge line or the skirt, whatever you want to call it, is typically um, programmed to always respect the part. So no matter what part you have on your bed, that skirt will stay, you know, six millimeters or two millimeters or whatever away from the part itself, which is great. Um, but for some reason in Prusa Slicer, it doesn't now, and as far as I know, it never has. It does not respect the boundary of a, of a brim. So what ends up happening sometimes if you don't catch it is you're gonna end up with a print like this and you're going to go print and what's going to happen is is this first of all uh there's a break in the brim so you're you're printing 20 millimeters you're getting uh six millimeters basically so one thing to remember is when you do the brim you can do two things you can either make sure that this is moved out to the, to at least 20 millimeters to match you know you want it as the same as your brim width or uh do what i usually do and just turn it off altogether by putting a zero in the loops so the reason I turn it off is, is that essentially a brim starts on the outside and it does one single coil inward, right? And you don't really need uh, a skirt uh, to, to uh, equalize the pressure in the nozzle because the brim is effectively gonna do the same thing. So when we turn that off, this is what it looks like. So this is what Prusa Slicer's brim looks like. It is a single extrusion that basically just goes concentrically all the way to the inside of it. What you're gonna notice is there is a little single, maybe half of a line width gap that is put into um, up against the part. And that is so that when the part comes off the bed, the brim will come with it and it's an easier cleanup. You can usually just pull it off, but if it doesn't pull off, you can take a uh, deeper ring tool and clean it up pretty easily. But the question that I hear is like, sometimes this isn't enough. So on a part like this, depending on your printer, um, even even putting a brim this big isn't going to give you better bed adhesion because like Prusa Slicer is showing us here, it's not touching the part. And if it's not touching the part, um, really the only reason that it does touch is because when you squish th these layer lines down, they squish out this way and the nozzle basically overlaps them a little bit. And so what contact you have is from the squish on the bed, not from the brim. But the question that I heard tonight, and I've heard several other times recently is, why can't we make it thicker? Why can't we adjust the distance from the part? And those are all valid questions. A lot of slicers give us the ability to add one, two, three, four, maybe even uh, a brim width or you know height that I, I believe that like uh, Simplify 3D does it uses a skirt as a brim and you can actually make it go as close or as far away from the part as you want. Um, but in Prusa Slicer, unfortunately, this is the only choice we got is how many, how many millimeters wide do you want it? So if you have a part and the brim is not working, um, I don't recommend the raft and you've checked all your settings and it's still not working. Um, we're going to use a, another technique that will get, almost guarantee that the part will stick no matter what. So we're going to turn our uh, skirt back on here and we're going to put it back to the six millimeters. We're going to turn off the brim 
And what we're going to do is we're going to take a basic object in uh, Prusa Slice, and we're going to make our own brim. And it's super simple, it's super fast, and I think with a couple little tricks here, um, you know, this has kind of become my go-to if I have parts that are have minimal contact on the bed. So first things first, you click off your part. So when you're clicking on your part and you right click on it, you're gonna get a, a drop down menu that's gonna show you all these, all the options you have for that model. And these are like per model settings. But for the sake of this argument, we do not wanna, we don't wanna do anything with the model. We want to add something to the bed that is going to help our part stick. So we're gonna click off the part by just clicking anywhere on the bed. And then we're gonna right click on the bed and we're gonna say add shape and we're gonna add a cylinder. We're gonna hit the number one key on my uh, keyboard here to give us an overhead view. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this part and we're gonna start shaping it to our brim. Now, again, remember Prusa, Prusa Slicer only gives us one layer. So in an ideal situation, you would be able to do two or maybe even three layers. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this part and we're, when you first do this, this lock is going to be white right here. And what this lock is telling us is that it's locked in all directions. So if you move it, you know, make it bigger or smaller, it's gonna get bigger and smaller in all X, Y, and Z directions. So we're gonna unclick this and we're gonna make sure that this is not, uh, they're not locked together. I recommend as you go down to the sizes here and what we're going to do is we're gonna type in how big, how, how, you know, how wide we want our uh, brim to be. And then we're going to set how high we want our brim to be. So first things first, we're gonna take this and go 25 point, uh, we're gonna say 25 millimeters, and then we're gonna do 25 millimeters. And then if we wanted one layer thick, we'd go 0 0.3, the so one layer thick, we'll slice that and see what that looks like. You'll also notice that what proves the slicer, because this is effectively a part, the skirt does respect that relationship to that, to, to your homemade brim. So, you know, this, this is gonna be, far better than a typical brim, in my opinion. Now, there's some downsides of this is, is that basically, it's gonna print this, this part right here, this, you know, the brim, and then it's gonna print your first layer of your model literally right on top of it, and it's gonna smash it together. Um, and again, it makes cleanup a little more difficult, but that part will stick to the bed, almost guaranteed, but this will make sure because your part is gonna get basically merged with that, that brim. Um, and that brim, unless something happens, will not come off the bed until you're ready for it to come off the bed. So we're going to now look at it. I'm gonna hit uh, my tab key and go back to the, the um, platter. And the next thing we're gonna do is, the question is, can you adjust it, you know? So you can't adjust a brim typically, but in this, with this format, you can. So. We're printing a 0.3 layer height, so let's go 0.6 or 0.9, let's say, and then we'll slice that. Now this will be three layers thick. Now that is for sure going to stick it. This is not only, um, you know, melting your parts together, for example, but this is going to be very rigid on the bed. So this is the best way for long, tall parts that have minimal bed adhesion um, in Prusa Slicer. I use this a lot. And where this idea originally came from was, uh, I saw Joel Telling talking about doing the Mickey Mouse ears, basically making these little discs and putting them on the corners of parts to hold them down. And that's great, um, I, I do that too. I think that's a great way to use these, but I don't think people typically use them as a brim. And my experience is this works just fine. Now, the bottom of their part is gonna look a little goofy maybe, uh, not as clean as you want. But again, the point of this is to make your part stick to the bed. And this does make your part stick to the bed. But you can see where it's running the perimeters right here and it just basically pushes it down through the brim and it works extremely well. Um, I think for all the people that are asking, can you adjust the brim or what options do you have in Prusa Slicer? I think this is a great tool to have in your back pocket if you're frustrated and you know, you can't get a part to stick to the bed. So anyways, thanks for watching guys. I appreciate it. Um, again, my goal here is to just try to help um, maybe newbies or people that are struggling with some of their issues with the 3D printer. Um, please leave your comments down below and uh, I'd be happy to answer them or get back to you. Um, if you want to get a hold of me on Twitter, 
Um, that'll also be down in the uh, description below, and you're feel free to um, follow me on there or DM me there. I appreciate you guys' time. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, catch you on the next one.